recording this because at the moment there's a bit of an argument between the Pride of Canterbury there and the, what's it called Roger? Courage. Motor Vessel Courage. Motor Vessel Courage there going from uh, east to west is it? Who's going from east to west? Yeah he's going from east to west. Courage is going east, going east to west. Motor Vessel Courage thinks it's going to hit the Pride of Canterbury there. Pride of Canterbury is continuing to go straight towards Dover and they, they're getting a bit upset with each other because he wants the Pride of Canterbury to alter course they are coming together and both of them are saying they're not going to change course Oh my god, they are getting quite close, aren't they? Yeah. Wow. Oh. oh my god. The UK phone number is Well, I've now got the two in the same picture together. Yeah. I think the Pine of Canterbury is going to go to the stern, so I don't think there is going to be a collision, but. I don't believe this. Is he I well, I don't know. This is this is. <gasps> Here's the Varn lightship, which is about to be eclipsed by a large container ship. Bev, do you know anything about it? Uh, well, it says here that it's the CMA CGM butterfly. Uh, CMA CGM is now the second or third largest container line in the world. CMA was founded by a Lebanese refugee in Marseille in the 1970s. Jacques Cossade. CGM was a maritime company run by the French government. CMA bought CGM in 1996 for not, not a lot of money. I think we're still awaiting the outcome of a corruption trial also involving President Chirac and Hariri, the, the one who was assassinated in Beirut. And that's the Varn. It's only two or three metres deep at that point. They say it's an island. Is it an island if you can't see it? Or, or how would we know? You might wash up on it on a stormy night. This is the uh, three-mile sailboat, the Shabab Oman, S-H-A-B-A-B-O-M-A-N, heading to Vigo, doing 5.4 knots down the channel, on Tuesday, 31st of August. That's Sunny Sands. That's sunny How Sands. many swimmers have we got down there? Just three. 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 Two, is it three now? Yeah. There was just a young lad and an older guy. Yeah. Oh, yes, I can see a third now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bobbed up from the surf. So it's a very blustery day. This is Jen. And so there's just a couple of people mad enough to swim. <coughs> we have an invasion of the local seagulls. Don't know where they're coming from, but there's about 300 odd. And there's nobody feeding them, and they're not thought of anybody, there's dogs walking past. So we don't know what they're, why they're here or where they come from. There certainly is a mixture of, of all types of goats. I think the dog's a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. OK, Trevor Hughes here, updating you on the Roman dig. It's quite a lot on the Canterbury Christchurch University site, because they're partly involved with this. And they are asking for volunteers to sift through that spoil. To see if they've missed anything. Anyway, Archbishop County be returning to base, and we can see the exposed Roman stone there. First discovered 1923, I think, and somebody was walking 
along and uh, there had been a recent cliff fall. I did some uh, geophys surveying the other day. There's supposed to be lots of Roman properties there. Obviously a lovely place overlooking the, uh, the sea. Below me, always below me is water. Always with lowered eyes do I look at it. It's like the ground, like a part of the ground, a modification of the ground. 